Hey guys, it's Mr. Post, and on today's video, the objective is to examine single replacement reactions. We learned about five reactions recently, and we're going to key in on the one today, the single replacement reaction. And what we want to find out in the single replacement reaction is we want to learn how to use the activity series to predict if reactions actually will occur. This is an example of an activity series. Uh, just got this picture off the internet somewhere, but it really it shows us and illustrates exactly uh, what an activity series is. Activity series uh, separates the metals and the nonmetals. And on the left hand side of the page, we have the metals. These guys are over here. The metals include lithium, potassium, calcium, etc. On the right hand side of this paper, you're going to see we have what's known as the halogens, or also the nonmetals. And the general gist is, as I go down my group here, as I go down my column, my metals and nonmetals both have decreasing activity. So the more active metals are located at the very top of the columns. Okay, So lithium and potassium are both very, very active metals. And on the other side, on the other side, which you're going to see is fluorine, and chlorine both as very active nonmetals. Now the key here with the activity series is that anytime I have a single replacement reaction, the higher element can replace a lower element in a replacement reaction. And I'll demonstrate this during the video. But I also want to key in on here what's at the very bottom of my list over here. If I go over here to gold, okay, what's What's going on down with gold, platinum, silver? I just want you to see these are very big elements. They have a lot of electrons, a lot of energy levels, and therefore they're not going to be very active. And what you see generally towards the top, not all the time, but a general trend is that lithium, potassium, those are your smaller atoms, which have smaller atomic radiuses, meaning higher electronegativity, higher ionization energy. And you see that on the other side too with fluorine and chlorine too. So here we're going to key on today using the activity series to predict if single replacement reactions will happen. These are your possible outcomes for single replacement reactions. In a single replacement reaction, you generally have a compound that will react with an element. And the element has a possibility. It can replace one of these elements. When I say replace it, I mean trade places with it. And what you have on the other side, then, is the element that was originally alone, now in a compound. And the one that was previously in the compound, let's just call it element C, is now alone. Basically, the single element replaces, notice the name, single replacement, replaces one of the elements in the compound. Now that can happen, and they can switch. But also a possible combination is the two substances are mixed, and nothing happens. There is no reaction. A good example of no reaction, you drop a penny in water and it doesn't fizz, it doesn't do anything. There is no reaction. So just because you mix two possible substances, an element and a compound, doesn't mean you're guaranteed a reaction. So this is really a very strong, this is an or. This does not have to happen. Okay guys, let's get into using the activity series. Now the title of this slide is the replacement of a metal Replacing a metal by a more active metal. Okay, there's a lot of words here. We're going to break it down and, f and follow this up with an activity series so you know what's going on. Let's key in on what's going on here. For a reaction, in this case we're talking about a single replacement reaction to occur, the metal alone, and I want to key in on this, the metal that is alone okay, must be higher on the activity series than the metal in the compound. Okay, let's go down to the bottom here. For a reaction to occur, the metal alone must be higher than the metal in the compound. Okay, in order for iron to bump out copper and trade places with it, iron is the atom alone or the element alone must be higher on the activity series. Now here we go, let's look at the activity series and see if this reaction happens. Alright, so here's our reactants. The reactants are iron and copper sulfate. And we're going to key in on copper. Right? It's the one that's important here. Alright, let's find iron on our activity series. And here we go. There's iron. In order for this reaction to occur and for iron to bump out copper, iron has to be above copper in order to replace it. 
and if we go down here, there's copper. So I want you to clearly see iron is more active than copper, and therefore the reaction will occur. All right, so this is what we're looking at now. Iron actually will replace copper, and copper will be on its own as a product. All right, and if we go across the reaction here, there's copper. Copper is no longer a compound. It is by itself. It has been replaced, a single replacement. So the reaction occurs. Why? Because Fe is higher than Cu on the activity series, meaning it is more active, and what I produce now as a product is copper. But what happens if the reaction is kind of reversed? What if copper is the single metal in the reaction and it is attempting to bump out iron? Well, in that case, in order for copper to bump out iron, it has to be above iron on the activity series. Once again, these are the same elements we used before. There's copper. There's iron. So copper is the one that is alone. Now, if copper is alone... Okay, and this is my compound. That's my compound right there. My compound metal is iron. Clearly, copper is not as active. It is less active than the element that's in the compound. So in this case, iron wins out, and the reaction will not happen. So not all the time will reactions happen, only when the element that is alone is more active. So in this case, this is a great example of no reaction happening. This over here will not happen. I'm actually going to cross it out because the reaction doesn't go forward. Nothing occurs. So copper is mixed with iron sulfate. Nothing happens. Why? Once again, because copper is lower on the activity series than Fe. And it's less active, meaning it's really less strong. Now, this is also true earlier in the video. I showed you a list of nonmetals, too. The same rules apply here. Okay, for a replacement reaction to occur, the solo nonmetal, meaning the nonmetal that is alone, must be more active than nonmetal that is attempting to replace. All right, here is our example. I have a reaction here, it's single replacement. I have an element that's alone and a compound. Now, chlorine is going to attempt to do a replacement. It can only replace a nonmetal because chlorine is a nonmetal. So in this case, I'm going to go to bromine. Now, if I look over here, this is chlorine right here. It is the element that's alone. It is more active than bromine, the element that's in the compound. So, therefore, this reaction will occur. So, this reaction occurs because chlorine is more active than bromine. And I produce, on this side, NaCl and also bromine. Okay, guys, we're going to wrap it up now with just a, a quick reaction here. What will iron try to replace in this reaction here? Okay, will iron try to replace? I have iron plus CuSO4. This might even be the reaction we used earlier today. Um, but what will iron try to replace? Once again, the key I want you to see here is that I'm dealing with a metal. When I'm dealing with a metal, I am committed to using the metal list. Okay? So really which one of these elements down here is a metal, or which one appears in the same list as iron, and that's copper. So iron is going to be right here, and it's going to attempt to replace copper. Will it replace copper? Yes, it will, because the element that's alone is iron. It is more active than copper in this equation. Okay, so yes, this definitely does occur, because iron is more active. Guys, and that about wraps it up. Okay, hope this was helpful. And uh, thank you for tuning in. Have a good night.